88 aphorism organon of medicine the action of medicines in the liquid form upon the living human body takes place in such a penetrating manner spreads out from the point of the sensitive fibers provided with nerves where to the medicine is first applied with such inconceivable rapidity and so universally through all parts of the living body that this action of the medicine must be denominated a spirit like a dynamic virtual action footnote it is specially in the form of vapor by olfaction and inhalation of the medicinal aura that is always emanating from a globule impregnated with the medicinal fluid in a high development of power and placed dry in a small phial that the homeopathic remedies act more surely and most powerfully the homeopathic physician allows the patient to hold the open mouth of the file first in one nostril and in the act of inspiration drawn the air out of it into himself and then if it is wished to give a stronger dose smell in the same manner with the other nostril more or less strongly according to the strength it is intended the dose should be he then cocks up the file and replaces it in his pocket case to prevent any misuse of it and unless he wish it he has no occasion for an apothecaris a person who prepared and sold medicines and drugs assistance in his practice a globule of which 10 20 or 100 weigh one grain impregnated with the 30th potentized dilution and then dried retains of this purpose all its power undiminished for at least 18th or 20 years my experience extends this length of time even though the file be opened a thousand times during that period if it be put protected from heat and the sun's light should both nostrils be stopped by coryza or polypus the patient should inhale by the mouth holding the orifice of the file betwixt his lips in little children it may be applied close to their nostrils while they are asleep with the certainty of producing an effect the medicinal aura thus inhaled comes in contact with the nerves in the walls of the spacious cavities it traverses without obstruction and thus produces a salutary influence on the vital force in the mildest yet most powerful manner and this is much preferable to every other mode of administering the medicament in substance by the mouth all that homeopathy is capable of curing and what can it not cure beyond the domain of mere mutual surgical affections among the most severe chronic diseases that have not been quite ruined by allopathy as also among acute disease will be most safely and certainly cured by this olfaction i can scarcely name one in a hundred out of the many patients that have sought the advice of myself and my assistant during the past year whose chronic or acute disease we have not treated with the most happy results solely by means of this olfaction during the latter half of this year moreover i have become convinced of what i never could previously have believed that by this olfaction the power of the medicine is exercised upon the patient in at least the same degree of strength and that more quietly and yet just as long as when the dose of medicine is taken by the mouth and that consequently the intervals at which the olfaction should be repeated should not be shorter than in the ingestion of the ma material dose by the mouth
Section 288 is entirely omitted in the 6th edition and replaced by a new section as follows. I find it yet necessary to allude here to animal magnetism as it is termed or rather mesmerism as it should be called in deference to mesmer its first founder which differs so much in its nature from all other therapeutic agents. This curative force often so stupidly denied and disdained for a century acts in different ways. It is a marvelous priceless gift of God to mankind by means of which the strong will of a well-intentioned person upon a sick one by contact and even without this even at some distance can bring the vital energy of the healthy mesmerizer endowed with this power into another person dynamically just as one of the poles of a powerful magnetic rod upon a bar of steel. It acts in parts by replacing in the sick whose vital force within the organism is deficient here and there in parts also in other parts where the vital force has accumulated too much and keeps up irritating nervous disorders, it turns it aside, diminishes and distributes it equally and in general extinguishes the morbid condition of the life principle of the patient and substitutes its place, the normal of the mesmerist acting powerfully upon him, for instance, old ulcers, amurosis, paralysis of single organs and so forth, many rapid apparent cures performed in all ages by mesmerizers endowed with great natural power belong to this class. The effect of communicated human power upon the whole human organism was most brilliantly shown in the resuscitation of persons who had lain some time apparently dead by the most powerful sympathetic will of a man in full vigor of vital energy and of this kind of resurrection history records many undeniable examples. Footnote Especially of one of such persons of whom there are not many who along with great kindness of disposition and perfect bodily powers possesses but a very moderate desire for sexual intercourse which it would give him very little trouble wholly to suppress in whom consequently all the fine vital spirits that would otherwise be employed in the preparation of the semen are ready to be communicated to others by touching them and properly exerting the will. Some powerful mesmerizers with whom I have become acquainted had all this peculiar character.